for certain styles of video, showing the keys that I'm pressing on the screen can be incredibly useful. Let's say I'm doing a video on something that has a bunch of hot keys or a bunch of key combinations. Let's say something like NeoVim, for example. Obviously, for day-to-day -day use, an application like this probably isn't really that useful, but maybe it is if you're learning touch typing, for example. Over on the Xorg side, there is a solution. That application is screen keys. It's a pretty basic application, but it does pretty much everything you need it to do. And until recently, I didn't think a Wayland solution actually existed. Turns out there is one, though. At least if we're talking about WO roots, so Sway, River, Wayfire, things like that. Basically, most of the window managers. Right now, it's going to spawn in the middle of my screen, but it can also be customized to basically sit wherever you want. So to launch it, all we need to do is run W show keys, and it's going to spawn in the center of your screen on whichever screen you open it up on. So in this case, it's on my main screen. If I went to the screen that has OBS, it would be there, so on and so forth. And while you have it open, it is going to follow you between desktops. If those desktops are on the same monitor that it was actually opened up on. First thing you probably want to do is not have it in the middle of your screen. This can be fixed with the dash A option, and then passing in either top, Sometimes when you start the application, it is going to take a bit of time before it starts recognizing your keyboard. Passing in bottom, left, or right. Personally, I typically like to have it at the bottom of videos, but you might like it anywhere else. In the case of left and right, it's going to look like this. It is not going to be vertical, sadly. Now, the out-of-the-box bottom option, I'm perfectly fine how far away from the edge it spawns. It could be closer, it could be further away. I don't really mind. But if you want to go and change this, this can be modified by passing in the dash M option. So this is going to take in a margin number with zero being directly on the edge. Now, do keep in mind, this is going to accept a negative value. So if we're going to pass in something like negative 50, it is going to spawn like... Oh, it's completely off the screen. Let's not try that. Negative 20. It is going to spawn partially off the screen. If I had to modify the value, I guess like maybe 10 pixels is probably fine, but I just don't really care enough. I would have liked to see a bit more control over the location, like an X and a Y value, so I can put it literally anywhere on the screen, but it does the job for the most part. Now for the default timeout, it's basically fine, but if you want to go and modify it, this can be done by passing in the dash T option, and then passing in a amount of time you want to have the timeout be. So let's go and set it to something like 5. That is going to be 5 seconds. If we go and type some stuff, and then wait for a little bit, it is eventually going to go and disappear. But one thing I do want to go and modify is the way the application looks. There is four options for this. We have the background color, the foreground color, the special key color, and the font. Now, special keys are going to be those keys like, say, the backspace key, for example, whereas the foreground color is just going to be the regular characters. We have the dash B option for the background. Now, all of the colors are going to be RGBA as hex values. So the way that works is RR, GG, BB, and then the alpha layer. So in this case, I'm going to set it to 0, 0. That means there's going to be full transparency. Then we have dash F for the foreground. I'm just going to set it to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then FF for the opacity. So that is going to be full opacity. And then dash S for the special keys. And I guess we'll just go and do A, B, C, D, E, F. And then FF for the opacity. If we go and run this and then... Now we have a dark blue, I guess, regular foreground. We have the special keys being, I guess, light blue, and then you can't see the background color. Now for the font, it is going to be in a format known as Pango format. It's not a complex format. Basically, all it is is the font name. So in this case, I'm going to go JetBrains. Uh, make sure you spell the font exactly correctly. Mono, medium, and then the font size. So let's go and set this to something like 36. If we now run this... As we can see, it's a much larger font, and it's also a very different font as well. Now, if you know anything about Wayland, you might be curious how this is even functioning, because Wayland shouldn't have a way for random applications to grab the keyboard while another application has focus. Well, this always has to run as root. 
So when you install this, it must be configured as a set UID binary during installation. It requires root permissions to read input events. These permissions are dropped after startup. So because this is set up as a set UID binary, this is why when I run this, I'm not doing like sudo wshow keys or anything like that. If I actually try to do that, it isn't actually going to function. Now, if you're installing on something like Arch Linux or pretty much anything out there, that's not really going to be a problem. When you install it from the AUR, it's automatically going to be configured as a set UID binary. But apparently on NixOS, that's a problem with the way their package management works. I don't really know the deal there, but there was an issue posted about it on the GitHub. Now, I mentioned that WR Roots is the only thing supported. Specifically, what needs to be supported is something known as WLR Layer Shell Version 1. So even if it's not WR Roots, if it does implement this protocol, then it is going to function. There is something very important to keep in mind that is going to determine whether this actually functions. There's actually two versions of this project. You have the version that I'm using, the version that's available on the AUR, and you also have the old version that was being maintained by Drew DeVault. And there's only like a maybe one or two patch difference here. So both versions are sort of in maintenance mode and not really being worked on. But the version available on the AUR, the version by AMMGWS, this one has a patch to make it work with modern Sway. I only mention this because most of the distros that have this application packaged actually have the old version packaged by Drew and probably don't work on most modern systems anymore. So if you want to use this and you're not an Arch Linux or on a distro based on Arch that has access to the AUR, your best bet is probably just going to the repo and then compiling it manually. Sadly, this project entered maintenance mode before Drew ever actually finished it. So a feature that would have been incredibly useful never actually got added. There was going to be a dash O option and dash O was going to select which output the application was going to spawn on. It doesn't function though. Now, if we were talking about Xlog, I probably wouldn't be talking about something in the state of W Show Keys. I talk about it because it's the only option I think exists. If there is another option that is in a better state that lets me select the monitors, has a bit more customization and things like that, please let me know. Because from what I've seen, there's not. This is the only option. But all things considered, it is a fairly well-known application. So when there comes a time when it is going to break again, which there absolutely will be, I really hope that someone comes along and fixes the problem. Even if it's just adding one extra patch to make sure it keeps working, that would be amazing. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you have a better suggestion, also let me know down there as well. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and subscribe to Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.